For today, we are going to deal with post-judgment remedies. Before diving into the different post-judgment remedies, I would like to have a flow chart to recap. So this chart will show you the flow of an ordinary civil action. And as we know, it is the, the violation by the defendant of the plaintiff's right that triggers the filing of a complaint. That will be followed by an answer filed by the defendant. And then when the issues have been joined, pre-trial will follow. After pre-trial, there will be trial and judgment. And then the party who is not satisfied with the outcome can avail of post-judgment remedies. So, hindi ibig sabihin yung natalo lang ang pwedeng mag-avail because even the winning party may not be satisfied with the outcome of the judgment and if he has proper grounds, then he may avail of post-judgment remedies. Now, there are two kinds of post-judgment remedies. Ito, no? Yung una, remedies before the judgment becomes final and executory. That means remedies within the period for filing an appeal. And these remedies are as follows. Number one, motion for reconsideration. Number two, a motion for new trial. And number three, an appeal. So, mapapansin ninyo, itong mga motions na to at saka yung appeal by notice of appeal, this is filed with a court that rendered the judgment. Now, after judgment becomes final and executory, we have three remedies. Action to annul a judgment under Rule 47, Petition for Relief under Rule 38, and Collateral Attack. That means the filing of a case to attack the decision in another case. Collaterally, because there is another issue that is presented in the main case. Some of your materials will include a Rule 65 petition for certiorari as a post-judgment remedy, but I would like you to take note of this. A Rule 65 petition for certiorari is not a post-judgment remedy. It is an original action. Okay? So I did not include that here, but we're going to be discussing that later. So having settled the flowchart, let us now talk about post-judgment remedies. Sabi natin the remedies that are available. Uh, first set of remedies are those that can be filed within the appeal period. <clears throat> ano yung mga appeal periods? Generally, when we think of appeal, we remember the, the period of 15 days. That's the general rule. So within 15 days from receipt of the decision, the aggrieved party may file any of these remedies. Now, yung receipt of the decision is determinative kasi pwedeng yung bawat party, iba-iba yung dates na natanggap nila yung decision. Most likely, they will receive it on different dates. And therefore, the period for filing the appeal as to them will be different. So, yun yung reckoning point. Pwedeng nag-expire na yung appeal period ng ibang party, pero dun sa ibang party, hindi pa. Now, we have the 30-day period for filing an appeal when a record on appeal is required. There are cases in which the movement or the appellant will be required to reproduce certain portions of the records of the case to be attached to the appeal notice. So that is the record on appeal. And therefore, during that time, the appeal period is 30 days because it will take time to put the necessary parts of the records together. And then for habeas corpus cases, we have 48 hours. That's the appeal period because of the urgency of the matter. The three post-judgment remedies within the appeal period are as follows. Motion for reconsideration, motion for a new trial, and appeal. Pag sinabing appeal, ibig sabihin, i-elevate -e yung records sa, sa higher court, sa higher body. Okay? Pwede itong by notice of appeal, <clears throat> pwede by petition for review, pwede by appeal by certiorari, also known as petition for review on certiorari and note. This is not the same as petition for certiorari under Rule 65. So of, this, of these three modes of appeal, 
yung appeal by notice of appeal, that is the notice that is filed with a court that rendered the decision. Okay. Itong appeal na to, this is a matter of right. We will be discussing that more in detail in the next video. For now, let's talk about motion for reconsideration. Motion for reconsideration is governed by Rule 37. Actually, ang motion for reconsideration at motion for a new trial nasa Rule 37. So, dalawang remedies ang nasa Rule 37. And for motion for reconsideration, the whole purpose of this, the principle behind this, is to give the court the opportunity to correct itself. There are three grounds for a motion for reconsideration. Letter A, award of excessive damages. Pwedeng questioning to anong a grave party. Letter B. The evidence is insufficient to justify the decision. Big sabihin, ang question na to is question of fact. Kasi ang pinag-uusapan evidence. Okay? Naalala ninyo, sinabi ko that there are two kinds of issues that are raised in a, in a case. Uh, issues of fact and issues of law. If it is an issue of fact, that is a matter of evidence. If it is an issue of law, okay, that is under letter C. And the ground is the decision or final order is contrary to law. There are requisites that must be complied with in filing a motion for reconsideration. They are as follows. Number one, it is necessary to specify the findings and conclusions that are contrary to law or not supported by evidence. It is not enough for the move-on to say, the findings and conclusions are contrary to law. Dapat specify anong finding yung kino-question, anong conclusion ang kino-question. And then, number two requisite, the alleged errors must be substantiated. So, the errors must be pointed out <coughs> with reference to the records of the case. <coughs> Excuse me. And then, number three, there must be a notice of hearing. The other party must be notified that a motion was filed and must be given the opportunity to file an opposition, the opportunity to be heard. So, kung walang notice of hearing, kung hindi nakaspecify yung errors, kung hindi nakaspecify yung uh, conclusions and findings that are being questioned, then the motion for reconsideration will be considered a mere scrap of paper or a pro forma motion as if it was not filed at all. Can a party file a motion for extension of time to file a motion for reconsideration? The answer is no. This is not allowed. This is also a pro forma motion. It will be considered a mere scrap of paper. If a motion for reconsideration is granted, what will happen? Well, the court will render a new decision. The old one will be vacated. And an MR can be, a, a, a reconsideration can be partial. If the MR is denied, a, the movement should appeal from the judgment, not from the order of denial. The order of denial cannot be the subject of a Rule 65 certiorari petition. So, let's say you have a 15-day period for filing an appeal, but within... Uh, the appeal period, let's say on the 10th day from notice, you file a motion for reconsideration. What happens? The, the appeal period will be stopped or it will be told. And then you wait for the court to resolve the motion for reconsideration. So the decision will not become final and executory because it will stop the period. Now, if a motion for reconsideration is denied, then he will file an appeal. So let's say on the 10th day, he filed a notice of appeal. And then he decided the notice of yung appeal later on. He uh, Okay, sorry. On the 10th day, he filed a motion for reconsideration. And then he decided the MR. So he wants to file an appeal. How much time does he have? He will not have only 5 days. He will have a new period of 15 days. Ito yung tinatawag na fresh period rule or the NAPES rule, also known as the NAPES doctrine. And this applies to both civil and criminal cases. But note 
but this applies only to judicial proceedings. Let's go to a motion for a new trial. Okay, this is again filed within the period for filing an appeal. And the same with a motion for reconsideration, it stops the running of the period to file an appeal. So yung decision nagsa-stop, hindi siya magiging final and executory, provided of course that the requisites for a motion for a new trial are all complied with. There are two grounds for this. Okay. So the first ground is fame. Fraud, accident, mistake, excusable neglect. Pag mag answer kayo ng bar exam question or even my exam, do not use fame. That's only for your memory aid. But you have to spell out fraud, accident, mistake, or excusable neglect. But it's not all kinds of fraud. It's not all kinds of accident not all kinds of excusable neglect or mistake. So, fraud, extrinsic fraud ito. Okay? Extrinsic fraud. Ibig sabihin, the fraud that prevented a party from availing of his right to procedural due process. Hindi ito intrinsic fraud. Okay? So, so ito, you have to also, uh, to also consider the other requirements. So, Fraud, accident, mistake, and excusable neglect must be such that ordinary prudence could not have guarded against it. And by reason of this, the aggrieved party has probably been impaired in his rights. You have to give the complete answer, so memorize this. Okay? And then, one of the requirements, essential requirements, is an affidavit of Mary. We'll talk about that a little bit later. The other ground is newly discovered evidence. Pero katulad rin ng unang ground, hindi lang basta newly discovered evidence. There are qualifications. And the qualifications or requisites are built into the provision. So ito yun. Newly discovered evidence which the movement could not with reasonable diligence have discovered and produced at the trial and which, if presented, would probably alter the result. Now, uh, you have to memorize this also so that you will uh, be able to give all the complete requirements for newly discovered evidence. In addition to those requirements, the motion itself must be supported either with affidavits of witnesses who are expected to give such evidence or duly authenticated documents which are proposed to be introduced in evidence. Now, let's talk about Affidavit of Merit. Affidavit of Merit. This is not the first time you'll encounter this because in motions to lift orders of default, you also have to submit an Affidavit of Merit. So, this is an affidavit, meaning it is a sworn statement showing that the movement has a meritorious defense, a good and substantial defense, and it must be based on facts. Hindi sufficient kapag sasabihin lang yung I have a meritorious defense. Dapat pakita niya yung factual basis. Ano yung nangyari para uh, i-consider ng court na meron ng merit ang kanyang uh, motion. Okay. So there are four requisites for newly discovered evidence. Number one, the evidence was discovered after the trial. So if you if you should note, no, it says newly discovered evidence, hindi new evidence. Ibig sabihin, pwedeng dati nang nag-exist yung evidence na yon, kaya lang hindi na-discover. However, it must be newly discovered. Because if the movement already knew about that evidence during the trial, he will not satisfy this requirement. Number two, evidence could not have been discovered and produced at the trial even with the exercise of reasonable diligence. So, this is important kasi kung nandyan lang yung evidence, easily discoverable, pero hindi niya nakita with ordinary, with reasonable diligence, that will still not be considered. So, ito qualified. It could not have been discovered and produced at the trial even with the exercise of reasonable diligence. Number three, the evidence is material not merely cumulative, corroborative, or impeaching. Ang ibig sabihin nito, walang ganong evidence dati. Walang evidence of that nature, of that weight, 
or that materiality. Pero kung meron ng similar evidence and this is merely supportive, cumulative, corroborative, it will not be considered. And the last one is evidence is of such a weight that it would probably change the judgment if admitted. Okay, so memorize all these requisites because they are all important. Kanina pinag-usapan natin na one of the grounds is fraud, accident, mistake, or excusable neglect. Ang gross negligence ba ng counsel is considered excusable neglect? No. The Supreme Court has ruled time and again that a counsel's gross negligence is binding upon the client. It is not a ground for a new trial. It is not excusable neglect. And just like a motion for reconsideration, the fresh period rule or the NAPES rule will apply. If a motion for a new trial is denied, the movant has a fresh period of 15 days to file an appeal from the judgment. Okay, again, appeal from the judgment, not from the order of denial. And again, similar to a motion for reconsideration, you cannot question an order denying a motion for a new trial through a Rule 65 petition for certiorari. So what is the effect if a new trial is granted? The former judgment will be vacated. There will be a trial de novo, new trial. It shall be held to receive the new evidence. What will happen to the evidence that was already taken before? It will still be considered material and competent. And again, just like a motion for reconsideration, a motion for a new trial may be partial. Is a second motion for a new trial allowed? Yes, unlike in MR. But the ground should be new. It must not be existing or available when the first motion for a new trial was filed. In appealed cases, a motion for a new trial is also allowed. So, pwede itong i-file sa Court of Appeals kapag na perfect na yung appeal sa Court of Appeals at habang nasa jurisdiction pa ng Court of Appeals. Meaning, wala pang final decision ang Court of Appeals. Hindi pa ibinabalik sa lower court yung kaso or hindi inakyat sa Supreme Court ng other party. Okay? So, all this for now. We will discuss appeal in the next video. See you next time.